So what does it mean to be a limiting reactant? So if we had nine slices of bread and four slices of bologna and a sandwich is two slices of bread and one piece of bologna, we can make sandwiches until we run out. Notice we can make four sandwiches, but we have bread left over. So in this case, our bread would be our excess reactant because we have extra bread and bologna would be our limiting reactant because it limited how many sandwiches we could make. We can also apply that to chemical reactions. If we had four NO molecules and three oxygen molecules, notice that our oxygen is diatomic, so we have to have two oxygen bonded together, hence the coefficient, and NO we have one nitrogen and one oxygen. We can react them, and they react in a two to one ratio. Notice that we make four NO2 molecules and we have extra oxygen left over. So in this case, NO was our limiting reactant and oxygen is our excess reactant. We have extra oxygen. So this problem looks similar to what we were doing before. The difference is they give you 35.6 grams of zinc and 100 grams of copper two sulfate. So they give you amounts of both reactants. We've got to figure out which one is going to produce the smaller amount of copper. So in a limiting reactant problem, first we're going to ignore the 100 grams of copper due sulfate and just convert 35.6 grams of zinc to grams of copper since that's what we're trying to get our answer in. So it's going to be just like before, it's a gram to gram problem. So step one, convert to moles. And it's always one mole of zinc is so many grams. Then my moles of zinc to moles of copper, because that's what I'm trying to get my answer in. Remember for your mole to mole ratio, you look at the balanced equation and that's a one to one ratio. Even though it's one to one, you have to write that. And then mole of copper to grams of copper. And that's one mole is always equal to so many grams. So 34.6 grams of copper. But I'm not sure if that is my limiting reactant, so I also have to do the same thing with my 100 grams of copper two sulfate. So now I'm going to convert my copper two sulfate to grams of copper. So both products have to be in the same unit so we can compare them. So I convert it to moles. My mole to mole ratio. Still one to one. And my last step should be the same because I'm converting them to grams of copper. Multiplying and dividing. So what this information means, it means that I have enough zinc to produce 34.6 grams of copper. And I have enough copper two sulfate to produce 39.8 grams of copper. So you can only produce as much as your smaller amount. I can't make more than I have enough zinc. I would run out of zinc before I run out of copper two sulfate. So the answer is 34.6. Do not box both answers. If you box both answers, that shows that you do not know what you're talking about because you can't make both of those amounts. I can only make the smaller one. Also, you should look you should label your limiting and excess reactant at this point. So following questions, you can refer back to them. Whichever one limited how much I could make by producing the smaller amount is my limiting reactant. So zinc is my limiting reactant or limiting reagent. 
while copper two sulfate is excess. So if you have a question that says which one is the limiting reactant or which one is in excess, we would convert them both to the same product. In this case, we converted them to copper. The smaller one, is, the one that produced the smaller amount is always your limiting reagent. The other one is excess. So notice in this problem, A wants to know who the limiting reactant is. The only way we can determine the limiting reactant is if we convert them both to the same substance. So I could convert them both to CO2 or both of them to H2O. But I might as well look and see if there's any other problems. And in this case, I have B. B wants to know the mass of CO2. So if I convert both of those starting amounts to grams of CO2, I can answer A while answering B. But if you only had question A, then you could convert them to moles of CO2 or moles of water and compare them as long as they're in the same unit. So in this case, convert your 250 grams of propane to grams of CO2. And then convert your grams of oxygen to grams of CO2. Restart when you have masses of CO2 for both of those. Alright, so on the screen you have the 250 grams of propane should have been converted to 748.6 grams of CO2. And I rounded that to four sig figs because we started with four. And then 950 grams of oxygen should have been converted to 783.9 grams of CO2. Comparing those two, we're going to actually box in the top one for B because 748.6 is smaller than 783.9. For my answer to A, this one is my limiting. So this one is excess. So C3H8 is your answer for A. The limiting reactant, I only had two choices, C3H8 or oxygen. CO2 is not a reactant, and so that is not the answer to A. It was only C3H8. C wants to know, well, how many water molecules can be produced from those same reactants? Once you determine in your limiting reactant, you're going to start every problem with that limiting reactant. So this one is in excess. So I don't care about that one for C. I'm just going to have to convert the 250 grams of propane to molecules of water. If you started with both amounts and converted both of them to molecules of water, the propane would give you the smaller amount again. You're just wasting your time at that point. So pause the video and convert your grams of propane to molecules of water. Restart when you have your answer in the correct sig figs. So you should have gotten 1.366 times 10 to the negative times 10 to the 25th molecules of water. Make sure that your answer has the times 10 to the 25th. A lot of times y'all like to leave that off from what the calculator gives you. So remember we're solving for molecules, so we should have a large number. All right, and the last one is D, and it wants to know, well, how many grams of the excess reagent are left over? D is the one people struggle with the most, so make sure that you're paying close attention and that you look over this before any quizzes or tests. So, like we said before, once you find the limiting reactant, you start every problem with it. So we're going to start with that 250 grams of propane, and since we're trying to find grams of excess reagent or excess reactant, we're going to convert propane to oxygen. So to convert my grams of propane to grams of oxygen, first I've got to get it to moles. My mole to mole ratio. And 
And finally, moles to grams. So if I used all 250 grams of propane, I would need 907.2 grams of oxygen. That's how much oxygen will be used, not how much is left over. So to get how much is left over, you always subtract what you use from the amount that was given. So it's 950.0 minus my 907.2. So 42.8 grams of oxygen will be left over. Go ahead and pause the video and answer A on your own restart when you have the answer to A. So you should have converted both of the amounts to liters of ammonia. And we got 32 liters of ammonia with hydrogen and 24 liters of ammonia with nitrogen. So this is my smaller amount. So A should be 24 liters of NH3. Remember, make sure that you're labeling your limiting in excess. And remember that you have to remember what that means. So the limiting reactant is going to keep reacting until you have no more left. So the follow-up questions, it says how many liters of hydrogen and how many grams of nitrogen are left over? Well, hydrogen was excess and nitrogen was limiting. Since nitrogen was limiting, we should have zero grams left over. because it's the limiting reactant. And so now we just have to figure out how many liters of hydrogen gas are left over. So we start with our limiting reactant again. And remember you need to convert your limiting reactant to your excess reagent. So pause the video and convert your grams of nitrogen to your liters of hydrogen. So converting that, you get 36 liters of hydrogen used. But again, we want to know how much is left over. And it says that we started with 48 liters. So 48 minus 36. Is 12 liters of hydrogen left over. Go ahead and pause the video and figure out how many grams of water will be formed when 32 grams of hydrogen react with 32 grams of oxygen. Restart when you have grams of water formed. So solving this, your grams of oxygen should have produced the smaller amount, which was 36 grams of water. So oxygen is our limiting reactant and hydrogen is excess. Go ahead and pause the video and calculate how many grams of the excess reagent are left over. So converting the 32 grams of oxygen to hydrogen, we see that we used 4.04 grams. But remember, we need to subtract that from our starting amount. So 32 minus 4.04 is 27.96 or 28.0 grams of hydrogen left over. 